hi guys welcome to another episode of my channel and in this episode I'm, i'll be talking about how i got an internship position in my first year as a master's degree student in the us if you've not subscribed to the channel do so by clicking on the subscribe button below also um don't forget to give the video a thumbs up don't forget to drop a comment if you have any question and um yeah without further ado let's get started now getting an internship position as a master's degree in the u.s it's kind of like a big deal in the sense that it helps you it kind of like gives you um job experience or work experience in the u.s so and this is gonna help your cv a lot right it's gonna put that little advantage in your cv when you're done with your master's degree or when you're done with your program and you're interested in searching for jobs and um, trying out the u.s job market so having the american experience is gonna have a little bit of um opportunity or advantage as compared to those that doesn't have um that kind of experience so but then it's also a bit difficult because I mean you're just coming from your country you don't like you don't know anybody you don't know how to approach employer you don't even know in fact most job most internship position will tell you that this opportunity is meant for um Americans or is meant for US citizens or permanent residents so that can that that can be really discouraging that's the truth it can be really discouraging but it doesn't change the fact that there are a whole lot of opportunities out there that if you're persistent if you search well enough there are a whole lot of opportunities that you can assess as an international student when searching for internship in the united states now um the first thing i would like to talk about is that your resume should be um fixed to match the american system now Coming from Nigeria, our resume or CV is always very, very lengthy. I mean, you have a whole lot of stuff. In fact, sometimes people put their age, their date of birth, their place of birth. Oh, don't do that in America, please. No, nobody cares about your place of birth. Nobody cares about your age. I mean, nobody, I've never seen a job uh, advertisement or with, um, yeah, with, with age requirement or needs. I don't know why they do that in Nigeria anyway, why? Nobody does that in America. So nobody cares about your age. Nobody cares about your place of birth. Nobody cares about, I don't know, and your, your gender. Yeah, nobody cares about your gender. So the first thing I did was to, um, I have a decent CV. I mean, I've known all of this before living in Nigeria. Like even when I was in Nigeria, I wouldn't add, add all of that on my CV or my resume. So what I, the first thing I did was that I formatted my CV based on the samples that I've seen online. Then I took my like my draft. I know it wasn't going to be my final draft, but I needed um, the student center, the uh, student. Um, we have a name for it. I think it's student career center in my school. Yeah, I needed I needed to give them something to be able to work with. So my school has a student career center where you can walk in with your CV. They call it a CV review session or resume review session where you can walk in with your resume and they're gonna like try and help you make it look good. They'll tell you what you are doing wrong. They'll tell you what should not be on the CV. They will help you use like good words that you should put here and there that's gonna show uh, positivity or like, yeah, stuff like that. I don't know how to express it, but basically, I believe every school would have that kind of center. So the first thing you want to do is like go there with your resume or your CV and they're going to tell you what you're doing wrong, what you should do right. The skills that you have that you don't even know how to put it on paper, they're going to give you an advice on how to package your experience such that it looks as if you've like you've invested years in that field. So that's the first thing I did, right? So I went to the student's um, career center we spent about 30 minutes going through my CV. I had to like tell the person that was reviewing my CV some of the experience that I've had. And they were like, why don't you add it on your resume? Why, why are you adding this? Why are you adding that? So we fixed my resume. That's the summary of it. We fixed my resume to fit the American like standard. Then the search began. The first thing you want to do is LinkedIn. LinkedIn is like your plug for internship, not just for internship, for any kind of job. LinkedIn is your plug. You want to do like if you have money, you can do the LinkedIn subscription, the premium subscription, even if it's just for one month. I figured that that helped me because uh, I was able to like see job insights, see the number of people that have applied for the job, and all of that. So LinkedIn is your first spot. Basically, every like type of job that is listed, even on some other sites, would find its way to LinkedIn one way or the other. So. 
sign up for LinkedIn, set up a good profile with a good picture and all of that, then start searching for internship opportunities. You might want to start in the states where your school is located, but um, you should also try some other state as well, right? So that was exactly what I did. I applied to a lot of opportunities. Some before I close down my computer, I'm gonna get a mail from them like, yeah, 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 you are not qualified, or you, you wouldn't. They wouldn't say you're not qualified. Anyway. They would just say we are, we've reviewed the application, and we wouldn't be moving on. You wouldn't be moving on to the next. I'm like, it's less than five minutes. I submitted the application. What if I'm not? I'm not gonna be moving on. It's not even up to five minutes. You've not reviewed any of these things. So yeah, you experience stuff like that, but it's not a big deal. It's part of life. So basically you want to make a long list you want to apply to as many places as possible but what really helped me was that i'm still expecting re response from some of the places i applied to but what really helped me was that i was the offer that i have right now i was able to reach out to the ceo of the company and i like express my interest in search for, in search for a, a pharmaceutical for an internship in the pharmaceutical industry and we like he asked me to send my resume and my cover letter now the benefit of having everything in place is that when the opportunity presents itself you are not that you are not going back and forth you are not running a task later to make sure that you have all of these things right you have them saved on your google drive or your one drive you grab it you send it to the person that is requesting for it so and that's exactly what i did and he reviewed it it was like it's gonna get back to me then he forwarded my my resume and my cover letter to the hr in his company and they reached out to me weeks later they were like oh um, this particular person reached out to us like forwarded your cv to us and um it's impressive i mean yeah it's impressive did you hear that they were like it's impressive and um <laughs> and we would like to have an interview with you and i initially did the schedule for the interview I wasn't comfortable with the date they scheduled for interview, so I had to like get them to reschedule. Then I went in for the interview, it was really nice. We had a nice time talking about the company. I met the CEO himself, I was lucky. I met the CEO himself. We had like a brief chat, and um, I got an offer from them. That's the summary of it. So, what I want to take away from this video is that number one, you have to fix your resume, number two, you have to set up a good LinkedIn profile. Do the LinkedIn subscription if you have to, it's just $29 per month. Also, you need to reach out to people beyond applying for jobs like that, beyond applying for jobs that are posted. If you know how to like search for CEOs of companies in your area, in your state, and if you are even lucky enough, they might be alum, like they might be alumnus in your school or yeah something like that so reach out to them tell them your interest create like a very concise draft introduce yourself and tell them this is what you're looking for most of us the reason why it was easy for me to reach out to people was because when i was applying for grad school i had to like send out messages to a lot of professors so i'm not really new to reaching out to code emailing people like just send them like, hey blah, blah blah this is my interest so you might want to revive that spirit in yourself when you're applying for internship right just reach out to people even if if it's even if it's not the ceo of the company even if it's just somebody that works in the company you never can tell they might just plug you in like that so um that's all i have for you in this episode if you like the video don't forget to subscribe to my channel also don't forget to give the video a thumbs up and um i'll see you in the next video